In our discussion on the double slit experiment, we said that the bright lines or bright fringes on the screen are formed as a result of constructive interference of the waves that pass through those two slits. Now we also said that the angular position given by theta of the bright fringes on the screen is given by the following equation. So m multiplied by lambda is equal to d multiplied by sine theta. Where theta is the angular position of the bright fringe, d is the separation distance between those two openings, between those two slits. Lambda is the wavelength of the particular wave that is forming that fringe and m is the order of the fringe given by a value, a whole number that could be 1, 2, 3 and so on. Now, what exactly does this equation tell us? So this equation basically tells us that the position of the fringe on the screen depends partly on the wavelength of that particular wave that forms that bright fringe. So basically, the greater the wavelength, the greater this lambda, the farther the wave travels and the higher up the fringes along the screen. Screen. So the greater the lambda, the greater the sine of the angle theta and the greater the angle theta, so the angular position. So let's see exactly what that means by looking at the following two diagrams. So in diagram A we essentially have the double slit experiment. Our wave has a wavelength of lambda 1. Now in this experiment, in this second double slit experiment, our wavelength of the light wave is given by lambda 2. Now if lambda 1 is less than lambda 2, then by this equation and from this result we see that this wave will essentially form a bright fringe that will be higher up. So the distance from the center line to where the fringe is formed for this particular ray, H2 will be greater than H1. And this wave will be found higher up and the angular position will be greater for this particular scenario than for this particular scenario. So that basically means this angle, let's call it theta 2, is greater than this angle given by theta 1. Now, let's apply the following result to this example. Now, one particular type of light that contains different types of wavelengths is white light. So suppose white light passes through a double slit with a separation distance of 0.6 millimeters. So the distance between the two slits is 0.6 millimeters. Now the pattern of interference is viewed on a second screen 2.25 meters away from the double slit as shown in the following diagram. So this is our double slit and this is our screen and this distance L is equal to 2.25 meters. Now the distance between this slit and this slit is given by 0.6 millimeters. Now let's suppose that the first order M equals 1 fringe is a spectrum of colors beginning with violet and ending with red. In other words because white light is essentially a spectrum of colors, a spectrum of different wavelengths, this fringe will consist of a spectrum of colors. So the first color will be violet and the last color will be red. So let's suppose that if violet is found 1.5 millimeters from the center of the screen where this is the center of our screen so this distance H1 is 1.5 millimeters and red is 2.65 millimeters from the center so this distance H2 from the center to where the red light appears is 2.65 millimeters we want to find the wavelengths of violet and red. So, 
let's suppose that we have two rays of light. So ray of light number one, this ray essentially is responsible for forming the following violet fringe. And let's suppose this angle is theta one. Now the angular position of the ray, the second ray that forms the red color is given by theta two. So we essentially have two right triangles where the base of each one of these triangles is given by L which is 2.25 meters. Now the height of the smaller triangle is H1, the height of the larger triangle is H2. So we begin by assuming that the angle that we're dealing with, these two angles are very small and that allows uh, allow us to make the assumption that tangent of the angle theta is approximately equal to sine of the angle theta. So let's begin by calculating what the wavelength is for the violet light and we're going to apply this equation. So for this particular case we essentially want to take this equation and rearrange it and solve for lambda. So lambda is equal to d multiplied by sine of theta 1 divided by m where d is the separation distance between these two openings between these two slits. Theta 1 is the angular position of this first ray and m is the order of our fringe. So we know that this is a first order so m is equal to 1. Now before we plug in our knowns, notice that we can use this right triangle to essentially represent tangent of the angle theta 1 in terms of the height and the length of the base of the triangle. So tangent of the angle theta 1 is equal to opposite divided by the base. So the base is L, the opposite side is basically H1. So tangent of theta 1 is H1 divided by L. Now how exactly did we go from this to this? Well notice because we make the assumption that the angle is very small, sine of theta is approximately equal to tangent of theta. So sine of theta 1 is approximately equal to tangent of theta 1. So, tangent of theta 1 is equal to opposite divided by Jason, so H1 divided by L, and this remains, so D divided by M. So, D is 6 times 10 to negative 4 meters, so we take this and convert from millimeters to meters. H1 is given to be 1.5 millimeters, or equivalently, 1.5 times 10 to negative 3 meters, and divide that by by m multiplied by L, so 1 multiplied by 2.25, where L is the distance between the double slit screen and the actual screen on which we're viewing those fringes. So we plug these into our calculator and we get that our wavelength of violet is about 400 nanometers. Now let's move on to the color red. So now we apply the same exact result to this color red. So now we're examining the second ray that forms the following right triangle with an angle of theta 2 and a height of H2. Now the base stays at L. So once again we take this equation and we rearrange and solve for lambda. So the wavelength of red is equal to D multiplied by sine theta divided by M. So once again this is approximately equal to D multiplied by tangent theta divided by m because of this assumption. And tangent of theta 2 is equal to the opposite side divided by the adjacent side, so h2 divided by l. So d is once again 6 times 10 to negative 4 meters. h2 is now 2.65 times 10 to negative 3 meters divided by 1 multiplied by 2.65. 25 meters and this gives us approximately 707 nanometers is the wavelength of the color red.